it's a half past eight in the evening, Friday evening. Uh, we see most of our uh, participants from the USA, which is uh, not what the whole Zoom meeting is about. But I think most of them are watching on the, on Facebook. So let's let's hope that uh, there are more Europeans uh, joining the Zoom talk. Okay. Um, last week, uh, Bas uh, van Dam, one of our people who joined us to tonight, uh, gave us gave us a good idea to talk about uh, tying tools. And uh, well, we got a topic today, so. Uh, that's what we're going to do today. Um, I'm going to show you some tools what I uh, use. And later on, Jan has a couple of uh, new tools for probably Americans. Uh, but most of them are already uh, uh, known in, in Europe. But maybe for some of us, uh, it's, it's a new tool. So that could be interesting. Probably uh, join later with some other tips and tricks from uh, his woods. Okay, let's, uh, a tool without device uh, is not a complete uh, overview. Uh, somebody tied with, without uh, vices, but uh, generally we use a vice. And uh, I've been using this uh, Dynakin professional for I think uh, the past 30 years. I bought it when I was in uh, in grad school, somewhere in the early 1990s. And uh, I've been using it ever since. And uh, I think uh, it's, a, it's a great quality, but somebody might use another vice and be happy with it, but this is the one I use. There's a funny story uh, about this vice. Um, I finally, uh, bought it after a lot of uh, savings and uh, I was really happy about it. And uh, around in the early 1990s, I, uh, I was uh, invited to tie at the several European shows, one of them being the Danish Fly Fair, where uh, I also met Alan Gretchen uh, several times. Did it well. And uh, well, on our way to one of the uh, fly fishing shops in Denmark, I was uh, driving, uh, I, was, I was in the car with Hans Weilerman, uh, a well-known uh, fly tire from the Netherlands, and his friend, his friend Lawrence Waldron. Maybe uh, some of you re recognize his name. He's uh, the maker of the famous Law Vice. And, uh, and Lawrence uh, was just starting making those vices uh, in those early 1990s. And uh, we were sitting back in the car and he said, Jay, would you like me to make you a vice? Well, uh, I just bought the Diner King a couple of years ago, so I was... Uh, I was out of money and I didn't have any idea that why, why would anybody need two vices? But he said, oh, I could, I could make for you a vice. But I said, well, I'm a little short on cash, but uh, we'll talk later. Well, we never talked about the vice anymore. And in the meantime, the law vice went really uh, popular. And certainly the past, uh, let's say, 20 years. And I have always wondered, what am I missing? So I bought a vice and I can show it here. A different color. And to be, to be honest, uh, I still prefer the Diner King. <laughs> <laughs> what, I, what I don't like is the limited room just behind the just behind the, 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 the jaws. And here I got lots of room behind the vice where I can put my hand on and here it's, it's limited. But it's okay. Uh, I got this vice for my little son who sometimes uh, likes to tie along with me. So uh, it will still be used, but uh, 
my preference is the Dynaking. Okay, let's talk about uh, the little tools. I'll have to turn the camera a bit. Let's start with uh, the bobbin holders. I've been tying with my uh, Frank Mattarelli bobbin, bobbin holders for, I think, a similar number of years, which is uh, well uh, near 30 years. Back then, uh, these bobbin holders were, how much did that cost, Al, back then? $20, something like that. And they are my favorite still. Um, what I like is it's simple. It's no frills. And uh, I did bend the legs, as you can see it here. I bent them so the thread goes in one straight way to the tube. This bending of the legs, uh, I was first uh, introduced by the TMC bobbin holders, the TMC ceramic bobbin holders, many of you probably have uh, used them. And uh, I thought it was a good idea. So I took, I took a pliers and I just bent my uh, legs. And this way I don't have stress at the opening of the tube where the thread will be going in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a bend, so to speak. So this way, the thread goes without obstruction into the tube, and I don't have no stress at the beginning of the tube. Well, along the ways, I tried uh, various uh, bobbin holders, but until recently, uh, TMCO, came out with this, what they call ceramic bobbin holder. It's a new type of tube they, they're using and they already sell them as curved or bent. And what I like with this TMCO bobbin holder is it's almost identical to the Frank Mattarellis, see? So I bought a couple and uh, that should be enough. Well, that's my preference for bobbin holders. Uh, let's talk about scissors. I, uh, I only use uh, three scissors. Well, actually only one for, for regular fly tying, like trout flies. I once bought this scissor, which is actually a nail scissor from the German brand called Zwilling. That's a famous uh, manufacturer of uh, scissors for all kinds of uh, applications. And this is uh, basically a manicure scissors with a very fine tip and a curved point. So I can easily maneuver to whatever I want to to get rid of those pesky little fibers or barbs or whatever. And I think I got this scissors for the past 20 years, I think. I never sharpened them. Obviously I don't cut wires with it, but uh, it lasts quite long. And what I really like are the real sharp tips. They're really pointy. For cutting uh, deer hair, um, I use those uh, red handled uh, Thompson scissors. Maybe uh, the older viewers might remember them. They had red handles and they were, I think, the popular, most popular deer hair scissors back in the early 90s. Later on, I think Thompson got uh, out of business and a brand called Anvil with those blue handles came along. So I think they're still available, but uh, I don't see them often anymore. But uh, if you are looking for them, you could still find them. This is, these are two scissors. I, uh, it was gifted by the late Chris Helm. 
Chris was a friend I met during the also the early 1990s at the, the Fly Fair in, in the Netherlands. And uh, at that time, uh, I was very unlucky uh, looking for good quality deer hair. And Chris, who ran a mail order business, he said, I can help you. And he s sent me uh, several times uh, leftovers of deer hair patches he was selling at his fly shop. And uh, I think about half, six months before he pa passed, uh, he sent me these scissors. He said, I want you to have them. Little did I know that uh, in six months he would be gone. So these scissors, a straight one and a curved one, serrated so they really grip slippery deer hair, elk hair really well. So this is thanks to Chris Helm. I think uh, the current owner of uh, Chris's shop, web shop, I think it's still called White Tail Fly Tying Shop. Uh, they still sell these scissors. I think they are around 60 American dollars per piece. So it's, it's a lot of money, but I think they're worth it. Let's move on to <coughs> whip finishers. Also, this is a Frank Mattarelli whip finisher, the well-known type. And this one has those little notch here in, which is made so you can cut the thread when you're done finishing with the, tying your flies. But uh, I rarely use it because I just cut it off in the scissors, but it's just the version with the little notch here and the end. These are great. I think I got them also around 30 years. And uh, recently, say about just prior to the pandemic, I saw these, uh, what they call them, uh, TMC micro whip finishers. The distance between this part and the other part is much smaller so when tying small flies i get less uh, risk running into problem with barbs getting into the into the thread and this version also has a little tube on the other side where you can use half hitch knots i really like these i think they're about 25 euros 25 dollars in that order. This is a dubbing needle. I bought it from a, a, a custom rod maker in USA called the Matt Leiderman. And this uh, dubbing needle is made from leftovers from a fiberglass blank. What I really like is the, the handle is quite thick, so it doesn't slip away from my fingers. I can hold it quite precisely, quite well. And I use this pointy needle for all kinds of things like uh, removing little itchy bitches between the heckle or whatever. And, and of course also applying uh, Head cement, but uh, I use this quite a lot because it's really handy for a lot of applications. And again, it's a real thick tube, so it can be held real sturdy. A hack applier. I've tried many different versions of hack appliers, including those old English ones but this is from, I think, CNF, Japanese yeah. brand. Yeah. This, this is fantastic. It grabs, grabs absolutely tight, no weights on a slip. And what I like is it, it turns. So if I heckle, I don't have to put my finger in a ring 
with the possibility of getting slipping out of my fingers. And this is fantastic. I think this is also around 25 euros, 25 dollars. They also got a short version without the handle, but uh, I like this one. This is my uh, dubbing brush or uh, teaser. This wooden stick is a leftover from a corn stick I once ate at K Kentucky Fried Chicken. You know those corn sticks? This is the way you are supposed to hold and eat the corn. I just took home, cleaned it, put some Velcro tape on it, and uh, it does its job. I think this is well over 30 years. I, I replaced uh, Velcro a couple of times, but uh, <laughs> real low-tech uh, dubbing t-shirt. Well, when uh, tying with deer hair, you have to uh, remove some underfur. What I often do is I, I, I use the point of my scissor and I go while I hold the clump of deer hair, I just go with the point into the hair and that way most of the dubbing on the fur will, will get removed. But if there are real pesky ones, this is a little comb, which is a remain of my little son's baby years. When he grew up, I just uh, put it in my uh, tying tying bag, and this is uh, doing real fine. I think it's a couple of bucks. I don't know. You can always buy dedicated uh, dubbing hair comb from some kind of uh, flight tying brand, but I think you'll pay at least uh, three, four times the price of this little baby hair comb. A heckle gauge, quite useful if you are uh, relatively new to uh, using uh, heckle. But uh, I haven't used this for the past 25 years, I think. It's still in my uh, tying bag, but uh, I just eyeball it, the size I can recognize what size it's it is, and I just uh, don't need this, but if you are not sure which size you need, this can be quite useful. I think these days, I don't know what the price is. I have no idea. It used to be like uh, one and a half buck uh, 35 years ago. Let's talk about uh, stackers, hair stackers. I still need the uh, most advanced hair stacker uh, that Al is using, made out of uh, chapsticks. But uh, as an alternative, I can use these. These are made by uh, Renzetti, uh, well-known uh, vice manufacturer and tool manufacturer. This is for, let's say, batch buck tying, where I have to uh, stack uh, a relatively thick a bunch of DFF for, let's say, uh, colors on uh, Dalberg divers and that kind of uh, deer hair flies. When tying smaller trout flies, my preference is the smaller version. And this is a dual size uh, stacker. One size is a bit larger. The other side is for smaller amount of deer hair. I think this is also around 35 years old and they work like a charm. And I know exactly how many deer hair I can put in each side. So basically I don't have to think about do I got enough. I know exactly how many deer hair you can put it in. So that's nice. However, about 10 years ago, I watched a, uh, video on YouTube on uh, by Kelly Gallup and he was showing he was using a de uh, deer hair stacker which looked quite unusual it looks a bit like a cigarette lighter and how it works is you put the deer hair in 
you can see the hair sticking out. If you stack, you have to put your thumb on it, otherwise the hair can peek out. You stack it and then you turn it this way and you can grab it. Well, maybe Kelly is quite uh, proficient with his uh, stacking, but I regularly have problems that the hair peeking out. And this is a really small version. It's called a micro version, I think. The reason I don't like this is the distance between this opening window can is sometimes too, too big, too large for real tiny uh, hair for, let's say, uh, uh, comparisons and that kind of uh, small, tiny wings, hair wings. So, yeah, it's nice, but uh, it's really well made, by the way. Yeah, I think it's only available at, at Kelly Gallup's uh, slide-in fly, fly store. But, uh, yeah, so for my stacking, I just prefer this one. And uh, I think these are about $30, 25 euros. Well, I'll, I'll end uh, with one little uh, tool. And funny thing is, when I said I couldn't afford a vice, Lawrence gave me this. And this is a uh, dubbing scraper. It's got little serrated jaw at the top. It's made of ceramic. And uh, at first I thought, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with it, but I'll put it in my bag. And after a while, I found out what an amazing piece of tool this is. If you got a hide of, let's say, uh, a hare's ear or, or, or a squirrel, if you scrape in the, in, the, in, the, in the direction of the hair, which grows, it will make you in no time amazing, uh, fine, dubbing and recently uh, I think Loon products uh, recently launched a similar product well similar it's exactly the same as this so I don't know whether Lawrence is uh, acknowledged that his design has been copied but Loon products has a similar version of this uh, dubbing scraper and I think I don't know I, I never I didn't look up what the price is but I think somewhere around $25, $30, I guess. If you tie a lot of uh, dubbing for nymphs and, uh, and dry flies, I, I sincerely uh, recommend you getting one of these because the, 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 the type of dubbing you can get out of fur is so much better than getting from a little bag of dubbing. This is fantastic. So I really recommend this one. Well, that's basically what I use for my fly tying. I don't like to uh, uh, tug along a lot of stuff when, when I go on a trip or go to a fly tying show. I, in fact, I like uh, to, to bring as least as stuff as I can bring because simply if you bring all your complete fly tying tools and materials, You'll never use them. You'll just tie two to three patterns, maybe four. And you don't need all this junk with you because it will, it will cost you a lot of uh, aggravation looking for the tools. And also it will help you with the traveling light, especially you have to fly uh, to your destination. So uh, I just grab the ones I need for the patterns I'm gonna tie at the show. And uh, that's basically a real uh, small bag. This is my travel bag. It's, really, it's, it's basically a toilet bag from some outdoor shop. And uh, as you can see, it's really simple. I got some Ziploc bag with uh, duck, uh, wood duck flank feathers and some kind of stuff, the patterns I use and a couple of threads and that's it. So, well, that's, uh, that's all from me for now.
I'll uh, hand over the microphone to Jan, Jan Aben, and uh, let him tell some more about these unusual tools those were developed in Europe. Okay, uh, thanks, uh, Jay. I hope my sound is good. And um, I have to apologize because my English is not as, as, as good as from Jay, but I hope you will, you will understand me. And what I want to show is um, a split needle. I showed him in the last year, but um, I made a short video. And I think it's very interesting, especially for the Americans. And then I have a tool from Futurefly to fold um, feathers for wet flies. And I will demonstrate it with tying a flying and using that tool. And third uh, item I have is, um, I called it uh, whip finish or half itch. That's the question. So maybe, maybe, it's new, but let's see. Okay, we start now with the split needle, okay? That's the split needle and looks very simple, and, but it is really um, a feature. It's a long needle and on the need on the point, there is a hook or what you call in, in, in English, I, I think it's burr. And uh, important is that here is a bending, a curve, and that is because you have to hold the split needle in a certain position between your index finger and your thumb. I'll start the video now. So on the on the um, on the point here is I have I have a second picture so you can see the burr it's coming now I hope yeah there he is uh, you see here is a, a little burr and you push uh, you 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 uh, pull the thread and on the same time you push. So you will see how it's, uh, how it's going. So first, um, before the demonstrating the split needle, we make a normally a loop with a double thread. And this means a double thread is double, th double thick, the thickness of the thread. And especially when you tie little tiny flies with a double thread that's often too thick for a nice result and therefore it's better to to split a single uh, single thread when you when you go on the point of the of the, the needle the burr then uh, when you you uh, go over it, you feel, you're feeling the, the little hook. And see what my left hand is, is uh, the needle is between my index finger and thumb, and the curve is looking up. And that's, that's important because the, the burr is in the same direction. Otherwise, you are on the backside and you will not hook you will understand. That's the curve. And that's the first demonstration. You push and purr. And you push. No, no, no. You pull and push. So first you pull, and on the same time, you go down. And that's splitting the thread. I mean, we will see it several times now. Go ahead, yes. Hook, push. Mm. 
And there you have a nice loop. Again, from distance, pull, push. And there he is. And you can do it, you can do it with every thread. I, I did it with, with a textile um, a thread, with the, 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 the Danvils, what is quite easy, but also with, with DSP um, until 18.0. Um, so uh, it's, it's fixing every thread, you have to believe me. Again, very near, pull, push. Hmm. And it's some practicing, you're always in the middle. So that is the first tool and, and I'm using it very, very much, but, but I'm, I'm often tying not so big flies. So I, I like the thin thread because it's not, thicken the, the, the base, you will understand, I think. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm. Now I will show you the, the future fly. That's the tool for folding feathers when you're striking the, the, the heckle fibers to the, to the bend of the hook. Like, like yeah, with wet flies, with, uh, you do that with, uh, let's say, um, um, some streamers. A uh, French partridge is a good example. And, and what you see here is on the top, there is a notch with what you call a V. Is that, is that all right, a V, yeah? Okay, I will start the video now. And I will show you, demonstrate that it was uh, with, uh, tying a fly and doing the job. I will tie a fly. It's the same fly, uh, about the same fly what I uh, tied last week, last week. And what you see is uh, I'm using the, the pheasant um, feathers for the heckle, and that's the part of the feathers is this, this, this feather here. And the tail, I will use the feathers here on the top of the, um, of the rim patch. And what I told you last week, all feathers of a pheasant you can use. I like this church windows for, for, for uh, wings, for caddisflies, and so on. I will not repeat it again because we saw it last week, but we will try, we will tie yeah, now this fly. And um, I show you, I demonstrate the, the tool. That's the, the tail from the top feather of a pheasant. Very nice. You can see it as, as a good substitute for um, the normal uh, uh, pheasant tail feathers. Maybe not as much as here, but okay. I'm making a, a loop and, and, and lay it beside because uh, uh, afterwards I will make a ripping with it. And uh, using, um, I'm using um, fry right as dub. It's a color is uh, light olive. I made the video with the Macos, and I'm very satisfied with, with it. That was a tip from Al. Anti-clockwise. So. There is the feather. That's the feather I showed you before, and we're using this part of the feather this part and you what you see here is the stem of the feather is here very thin and it's getting quick quick thicker 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 and 
And I, I think a feature of this uh, fly is that you can turn the, the, the hackle very good about the, around the, 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 the hook. And you can now see the, the marabou. And here down is a, a little piece of the after feather we, talk, we, we talked about last week. Maybe one tip, uh, when you use this feather, uh, let's say in a streamer, and you're, you can flatten the thicker part with a squeezer, and um, it stays uh, uh, flat, and that, that means that the feather will not roll over. It stays on the same place. You can, you, I, I, I hope you understand that, okay? Put away the marabou, and you see it's not, it's very thin of that place. And uh, for Jay, I'm using the same, uh, I'm using the same rotary plier as you have from CNF. And it's, it's there's, there's really very, very good. There he is. Put it on the top. I make a triangle. So you can, you can tie it on on top of the hook near near the, uh, the the hook eye, and make a nice base because a good a nice base is is good for a better result. Now uh, the tool is coming up. Please please attention. There is the tool. And you go from down, you go up. Maybe two or three times. And maybe you think it's not spectacular, but you will see the barbs or the fibers will really point on the bend of the hook. Without a lot of help. Normally you have to help to strike and so on, but see what, what's happening. I think that's enough. Hmm. So and it basically is, folds the hackle for you. Yeah, yeah. What's that? It's not. But this is not not very expensive. It, uh, I think it costs about uh, ten euro. Is but, it made out of a plastic or is it a leather? It's, no, no, no. It's it's, it's uh, aluminium. Oh, aluminum. Okay. Yeah, I stopped here because because I will mention something. I what you see is I'm making the head knot, and the head knot is not going over the barbs from the feather. And uh, that's why I will not disturb the nice rounding and the, the, the pointing, the, 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 the direction of the, you see it, I, do, I make a, a knot, but not about, not over the, not over the, uh, not over the, 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 the fibers. The knot is here. Normally you do that, but the, the result is is not as nice as what uh, what you can uh, you, you can have with this tool. And you will see. I will I will turn the fly, and you will see how nice it is. And that's also with with feathers from a hen uh, or from a partridge. It's, just, it's really it's not new, but I, I have this tool maybe three years.
It's a park bridge, red fly. I think very catchable, isn't it? <laughs> okay, a little bit dressing, a little bit. It's not necessary. But look, look around how, how nice it's spread. Hmm. And that was the result of tying with this tool. And I hope it's clear what, what the result is. And the result is really good. When I'm tying flies for uh, Mayfly time in, in Europe, I'm often fishing with uh, French partridge. And you can imagine when the French partridge uh, is, it's always, um, how do you say, cleating, the, the feather is down always on a hump. And, and not nice around the hook. And when I use this tool, it is nice around the hook. Okay, my third, my third item. Whip finish or half hitch? That's the question. And web finish tools are coming in all shapes and sizes. My favorite is the, the, the Marc Petit Jean, second from the left. And you know all the half hitch tools, from a botkin to an old fashioned way with, with the uh, ballpoint pen. But, so let's do a web finish first. Note the, the triangle, and that's made with any kind of whip finish. The turns go over on the horizontal, on the horizontal wire, and on the whip finish you can, you can go over three till, let's say, um, six times. And that goes well as long as the thread is, does does not get stuck. With finish knots can be made on the hook everywhere on the stem, on the on the on the um, on the hook. But also when you when you when you you can you can make a whip finish on on the hook eye, but you can also make a whip finish everywhere on the hook. And sometimes it's necessary because you have to tie off on, on, a, on, a, on, a, on a certain place. That's a three turn. And now we make some half hitch. And you can do that with your finger, your index finger. I, I, I personally I do that. It's, it's um, how do you say it? Um, most, the most half edges are near the, the hook eye, but you, you, uh, for fixing the thread, when you uh, make a rotation with your vise, you can do it everywhere on the hook, but um, then, then you use uh, the, the second method with, um, with the botkin. Now I'm using a botkin, so it's the same, and put in the botkin afterwards and go down. And you can place the, the knot exactly on the place where you want. I, I know it's nothing new for the most, uh, uh, for the most of us that's a half edge was a tool, 
was that's the bodkin was a lot was a hole on the, on the other side a, a little bit wide and then i use um the traditional that's a traditional one is two locks on both sides it's going over and you can you can push the 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 half hitch tool till the the heckle fibers and and sometimes you can position the heckle fibers with it i know it's nothing new for you but the the question is what knot is better is uh, which knot is is better the half edge or the web finish and i think a lot of fly fishers and fly ties don't know it. Here you see the, the half hitch. And there is tied two times. One, two, and the tech end is coming down under from the other side, yeah, underneath. And that's the half hitch. Which knot is better? Do you know it? This is the web finish. Three times here. And also the tag end is coming underneath. And that's the half hitch. You already see. Conclusion. Both are the same. There's no difference. Neither is strong. Uh, neither um, is stronger than the other. Did you know it? Many participants in our workshops didn't know it, and so I think. The choice which knot you tie is entire up to you. I hope that you enjoyed this part of the video. Thank you. Thanks, uh, Jan. Uh, no, no, I have, I have another encore, but mm -hmm. a, li a little one, a little one. Please wait. Last week, we saw a, a, a guy was demonstrating on BT's uh, Friday, and he was using, he was using the botkin with a half hitch at the same time. I didn't see it before. I think nobody saw it before. And I this week I uh, tried it. Uh, my I practiced it myself, and the result I want to show you. Please look. That's very short. Mm -hmm. And this I saw last Friday on BT's Friday. New for me, and I think the Europeans like it too. There it is. And the botkin is against my, my index finger. Do the half hitch. And on the same time going down, up. I think it's fair. <laughs> For me, it was new. I just want to show you what I did this week. <laughs> Jan, if if um, you know if you if you're a tire who keeps his scissors in his hands all the time, yeah, um, you you can do the same thing with your scissors. Yeah, I I see um, I, I, when when Alice uh, when Alice tying in in his uh, workshops. You can see it. He's he's using a scissor on the same, uh, and he's always using uh, the scissor in his hands. But I'm not doing this. But, and I saw this last week, and I was impressed how he did it. 
I think I was not the only one. And, and I've practiced it uh, this week, and uh, I, which I, I wanted to show it. Okay, thanks. Yeah, there's one thing that uh, I know Al always talks about, and that's doing a proper whip finish, you know. And what we find is that a lot of people who demo on their stuff, when they use the whip finish tool, instead of going from the rear towards the front with their wraps, they're going any which direction and half of them are go back. And then when you pull that through, you actually leave a line across the top, you know, of, of your things, which mm -hmm. makes it a weaker, uh, more hazardous situation. <laughs> but I noticed that if you use that, that uh, bodkin end with a hole in it and you do your half hitches, two or three half hitches that way, you you get them in the right direction. Yeah, it's true. But but it's what you prefer. I think I think the most the most of us uh, use a web finish, but the half hitches is, is 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 the same knot, and I think the same result. Maybe you have to do one more or two more. But um, you can you can whip finish with uh, let's say six five five six seven turns. It depends on the thread you use, and anytime it will uh, stuck. Mm -hmm. But uh, but <laughs> half edges are, are very well. You see. Okay, Jan. Thank you. Uh, okay. One question: Did did you watch Al's uh, Friday uh, show? At two a.m. in the morning, or did you rewatch the no, video? No, no. Re re <laughs> uh, okay. If you what watch do you it, imagine? What do you imagine? If you watch it at two a.m. in the morning, I doubt no. you will be sharp enough to uh, recognize this uh, yeah. feature you just told us. But uh, I, yeah, okay. I look, I look us almost every week on uh, <laughs> on YouTube. Okay. Good, good, good. Uh, our um, uh, participant called uh, Michael. He he. Uh, he told me that uh, the dubbing rake or the dubbing sc scraper is made by hairline and not by loon. So thank you, Michael. Okay. Eric. And, and where or L. was there was there anything that Eric wanted to share in the form of tools? Right. Well, that's for sure. Um, I've I've had a long love hate thing with tools, mostly hate. Uh, I used. To let me uh, just unmute. I, I used to go online years ago and uh, rail against the rotary vice. I've, I've long been a, a, a Luddite. Uh, and if you go online, if you go on YouTube and, and, and um, uh, just search for Eric Austin tools um a video will come up eric austin uh, tools a love hate thing um these these are the best tools a fly tire has right here uh, and and i use these for everything just about now i do i obviously use a vice i use hackle pliers um, there's a little joke in the video about rotary hackle players, which I, sorry, guys, I've never seen the point. And my joke is, if you get ha rotary hackle players spinning in one direction and spin your vice in the other direction, you could quite possibly go back in time. Other than that, I don't see the point. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Eric. <laughs> anyway, um, we got a time machine, right? Yeah. I do have one tool I want, I want to show, and it's gonna it's gonna look like a completely goofy, but for whatever reason, I I use this thing all the time, and I originally bought this from Ron Lucas, who is a dental technician and a great salmon fly tire for burnishing, as a burnishing tool. And it's this tool right here. It's a dental tool that Ron was selling at one point. And the point was you'd use this end 
as a burnisher. The other end was kind of a smaller burnisher uh, for small flies. You could use it that way. It also had a little hook on it. For whatever reason, I can barely tie a fly without this thing now. And um, I did a little research. Here we are. This is on eBay. Are you guys seeing this? Yeah. Uh, yep. Dental yes. tool. There's two dental tools. I think they cost six bucks. This is on. Uh, this is this one's on eBay. This thing is called a uh, a, a an amalgam spatula. They call this a spatula in the dental tool world. And this is very similar to mine. It doesn't have the little hook, but I never use that anyway. Um, and I, I don't, I, I can't describe to you the myriad of ways I use this thing, but I use it all the time. And um, trust me, if you get one, I think it's 650, uh, you'll, you'll start using it. And, and uh it's just it's just so handy. And this other flat one, if you're a full dress salmon fly guy, a lot of times if you're doing like the doctor series of flies, uh, you got the golden pheasant tippet inner wing, and over that is a golden pheasant tail wing, and then over that is the main wing, and that golden pheasant tail gets caught up inside the main wing, and you have to drag it down. And this this tool here would be really handy to slide up in there and grab that. But anyway, uh, for what that's worth, um, I, I can name on one hand all the tools I use. I mean, it's I've got a vice, and I do have a rotary vice, which is funny. My, my wife bought it for me. Uh, I, I, I never would have bought a rotary vice, but, but she, a, a vice, great scissors. Great scissors are really important. Those ones from Chris Helm are phenomenal. Um, a, a bobbin holder that you like, feels good in your hand, that easy to thread. The, for me, the Mattarellis aren't that easy. Um, so I use, I use a ceramic and, and a uh, uh, hackle pliers. I do 99% of my tying with that um, and, and only that. But so, Eric, um, that, that dental tool you're talking about, what do you use that? I assume not eating your cereals, but uh, what, do you, what do you use it for? <laughs> burnishing I, floss. No, no, I never use it for burnishing floss. That's the one thing I, that's what I bought it for. I never use it for that. It's not, it's not the best of burnishers. It works as a burnisher, but I use agate stone for, for burnishing. Um, what I use it for, like if you've wound some hackle and it's not clean, you go in there, you go in there with the, the pointier end, if you will, and mess with it. Or you can smooth things out. Um, I don't know. I I can't tell you how exactly how and why I use it, but I can't tie a fly without it at this so point. So there's no video where you're using this tool where we can see what to, oh, there, what to use I'm, for. I'm sure I'm sure that I've got videos mm. on you, YouTube. I think I've got 70 videos on there. I'm sure I use it somewhere along the line. I know some uh, recent video you did, Eric, you used it because I, I talked to Ron before he passed a few weeks ago and he made oh, one. And, I didn't know Ron had passed. Yeah, I'm Ron sorry to hear that. Ago. Oh, man. Well, but well, if, I, if I knew he was it, ill. You start I'm, out, I'm so, Eric. It's a wax if, spatula if, number seven. You can get them in. Yes. Apple. Yes. Eric, if you got if if you uh, got a video where you can clearly see what what it's used for, then uh, give us a tip. So next time I can uh, steal one from my dentist. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're they're at Amazon. They're like six years. Yeah, what yeah. You need to um, do when you go to a dentist, if you go and ask them 
for any of their broken tools because sometimes, you know, they have those double-ended tools and they'll break one and then they don't use it because uh, <laughs> it's kind of got a really a nasty end to it. Um, but sometimes they'll just give them to you if you're a good I, customer. I'll tell you what, I've been looking at a lot of dental tools that there's, uh, you know, the ones with the real fine um, wire coming off that's got a little hook in it and stuff. Yeah. I mean, mm. uh, I'm sure I'm sure a lot of these would be useful. Also, if you have a surgeon friend, you can go because they have to throw them away after every use, but they've got some great surgical tweezers. Ooh. And, they're and, like, if you, and if ooh. you know the nurse, make sure that she grabs all those cauterizers because they only use them once and throw them away. <laughs> And if you got a, a nurse in surgery that just picks it up and you can use it. Well, you know, you know, my, my line about the cautery tool is this. It's a great way to set fire to your fly, your tying room and yourself. <laughs> <laughs> well, something similar has happened, <laughs> but you know, one of the things like for any of the burnishers, like, like Eric, you're using uh, agate. That's one. And then uh, you want to make sure you do not get a dowel made out of aluminum because aluminum you can write with. And if you if you use aluminum on on your silks, it'll leave a gray discoloration on it. Mm -hmm. You make sure you use stainless steel, or you can do what uh, this is a you know tickle the ivories. That's from an old, old, old piano. That's a piece of ivory that were, was on the keyboard. And it's real okay. smooth. What, what one, doesn't, oh, just for a sec, what doesn't work is plastic of any kind. Plastic yeah. will rips, rips floss up. I had a guy make me a beautiful burnishing tool, but it had a plastic end and it just tore floss <laughs> up. Yeah, this one was one of those tools you get in the... Uh, of pottery and it's out of plastic, but it'll always have a nick someplace in it real easy and boy, it ruins it. And then this one is a piece of ivory and it comes out of a corset. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Those are hard to really come smooth. by. This anything one else, anything a, else, Eric? Not for, not here. Okay. I, I, could I say something, please? Yeah, sure. Okay. I thought that Jan's tool that was very interesting, the tool with the notch in it for folding the hackle, because I have a friend of mine that has filed a notch into his fingernail, and he folds his hackle use, using his fingernail. <laughs> I'm going to tell him he's not going to have to do that anymore. I think that would, I, I can tell one of the, there's a couple of tools I'm going to be adding to my list, and and I saw Jan do both of them tonight. I've got three tools to share with you today. And let me just go. I had I was prepared for everything because this is all some of the unique stuff that we've had to deal with over the years that Gretchen and I did. But this right here is a very unique hair stacker. And, uh, well, the way it works... Well, it, it just comes apart. You put the hair in, you stack it. With this device right here, after you've stacked it, it grabs it and allows you to set it in place. Now, I have to tell you that I, I got this uh, as part of a, like we got a lot of our tools here, because we were shooting videos for the people that wanted to sell it, doing instructional videos for them. And uh, the only thing I time I saw this thing used was when the guy that wanted to sell it was demonstrating it. And um, quite frankly, I tried it once and I never could get it to work for me. After a whole lot of years of using something else, I have to have to let it slide. And just reaching back in time, I wanted to share one other thing with you. This is a K63 uh, bobbin with spool of thread inside. And it was from the Herders Company, which is an old um, fly tying materials organization here in the United States way back when. 
And this one, I'll, I'll move it over to the vise here in just a little bit. But I wanted you to see that it's got uh, an interesting hook on it. I'll just set it over at my vise, and we'll look at that for in a moment. And the last thing is another thing from clear back in time. Some of you may or may not remember it, but it's a old Thompson whip finish tool. And um, a lot of people have seen it. And not everybody really knows how to use it. We'll just move over to the vise for a moment and take a look at that. Let me get my uh, fly out of the way and get some glasses on. Muddle me, Al. Yep, that's the muddle me. It's one I developed back in 1985, and it's uh, served me well over the years. Now, first off, I wanted to share with you, this is that bobbin with this hook on it. And I have to admit, I have never got the darn thing to work for me. It's a beautiful piece of equipment. And here's the way it's supposed to work. And I'll kind of talk you through it. But all I did is shoot the video, uh, produce the video, basically, for the fellow that was um, wanting to make the sales. And I have to be honest with you, I don't know that I've ever seen it on the market. Has anybody else seen it? Yeah. Blount, nope. Blount uh, was he, Wasatch Tools. He has this. He has one of those. Oh, okay. Well, anyway, it's a pretty good. It's a pretty good bobbin. It's a very nice bobbin, actually. But uh, at least the way I remember, it was it's been about uh, several years. As I remember, you uh, push this up, you form a loop, and then you reach up and grab this side of the loop. You get your slip of quill wings in there. And when you pull down on it, I'll hold that in a pinch. But when you pull down on it, it's pulling the thread equally on both sides of the of the quill wings, and you get a nice even collapse of the wing. That sounded good to me, uh, and it worked pretty good for the guy that was using it. But I got to tell you the truth, it didn't work for me worth a darn. So I'll just share with you one of the things that I thought was really unique. And if any of you got them and know how to use it, great. And the last thing we'll do is the old Thompson. I started with what this is. I can't remember if this came with my original kit or whether I got it later, but I got my original herders kit uh, with Thompson tools and stuff in it back in 1957. And anyway, this thing has been around for quite a while. And the way you use it, I'll throw a half inch in there this time so it doesn't cause me a problem anymore. All right. <clears throat> Now, you catch the thread with the big hook, catch it with a little hook, pull it into place, bring your thread into the notch, and rotate. And of course, that's really good for doing uh, on like parachutes and stuff like that because you can sneak right in under the hackle and do it. But if you need to put a... Uh, a whip finish back here, like you're tying zonkers or something like that. Not worth a darn for that, obviously. You have to do something else. In fact, I, I do my, use my fingers. But anyhow, just so you can see that one more time. And the other thing I had to do with it, I had to put a, a thread ball on the darn thing because it laid so flat on the on the tying table, I couldn't pick it up. Mm, right. And that's basically Say, it. Oh, yeah. That, the first tool you showed us, uh, you call it as a hair stacker? Yeah. Uh, it sure looks like uh, part of an engine from a World War II uh, submarine, but uh, okay, if you say it's a stacker, then it's okay. <laughs> this is a World War II submarine <laughs> steering. It's probably a steering wheel. That's what it is, I'm sure. Yeah, I recognize I it from, uh, <laughs> from it, but yeah, it's, if you yeah, call it the a stack, it's, it's fine. The up, it's the thing for the up periscope, isn't it? The periscope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is a little tool that I've come across in the last six months or so. Uh, I bought it at the dollar store. I don't know if they have dollar stores over in Europe, uh, but this little tool cost a dollar. I don't know if you can see it. little notch on the end of it. It's a cute little yep. cutter. 
And I use it for cutting my thread when I'm finishing off the fly. You can use your scissors and some people go in and snip, which is wrong. You go, oh, you don't snip, you just slide your scissors in. This is the, this is the tool that will do that. It cuts a beautiful knot, cost a dollar. You know, that almost you, looks like a, a seam ripper to me. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it does. And, it, and also, I have used it to fold tackle. So it's just oh, a notch. Yeah. Okay. It's a notch, but it's very sharp. Okay. Thanks, uh, thanks Tom. Thank you, thanks. Tom. Thanks, everyone, for joining us. For now, it's a wrap. Until next week, we'll be seeing you.